Now, Georgia just saw its second highest day for new COVID cases since the pandemic began. More than 26,000 positive antigen and PCR cases were recorded by the Department of Public Health on Friday. Confirmed cases from PCR tests make up at least 80% of those figures. The record was set about a week ago, right before the New Year's holiday. We're also seeing COVID patient numbers climb. As of Friday, more than 4,600 people have the virus and are being cared for in our hospitals. That's now about 27% of all patients statewide. Now, right now, Metro Atlanta is ramping up testing efforts both in person and at home. The Department of Public Health says it plans to open two mega testing sites. One will be at Jim Miller Park in Marietta, the other on Turner Hill Road in Stonecrest. You do need an appointment to get tested. We have posted all of that information up on 11alive.com. Now, in Cobb County, officials say they plan to distribute more than 60,000 at-home tests to people in the coming weeks. And while the specifics won't be laid out until early next week, we're told leaders are hoping to hold an event in partnership with the Cobb County NAACP to distribute the tests around the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. DeKalb County just handed out 5,000 tests last week. Other counties are still figuring out their own plans as well. Students in three of Georgia's largest school districts head back to the classroom on Monday. There are some concerns, though, like staffing, the potential for virtual learning and last minute changes to COVID-19 protocols. Hope Ford brings us some answers. Fulton DeKalb and Atlanta school districts head back to in person for the first time since Omicron caused the spike in cases locally. Fulton County is facing staffing shortages, saying hundreds of employees tested positive, but the district says they're committed to in-person learning and will look at remote learning if necessary by class, grade, and school. As for their guidelines, they're recommending following the CDC guidelines on isolation and say students directly exposed to COVID can stay in school and wear a mask for 10 days if they're asymptomatic. <laughs> Atlanta schools say they're not facing a staffing shortage because of COVID. 5% of their staff tested positive. APS will make any decision to go back to virtual based on if overall school positivity rate is greater than 5% and the county is experiencing high spread. They are implementing a new strategy, test to stay, an option requiring parental consent to test students if they come in close contact with a positive student or staff member. Finally, in DeKalb, their latest COVID numbers show 60 students and staff in the whole district reported a positive test, but this data is from the last week of 2021 and hasn't been updated yet. As for their protocols, they've revised them to match the CDC recent guidance changes on on quarantine and masks. The districts all say they'll continue to monitor cases in the school and county, with Fulton hopefully adding health experts predict the peak on cases to happen soon. Several parents have reached out to us with questions about the new guidance from DPH and the governor's office, allowing schools to stop contact tracing and relax certain quarantine guidelines. You ask us to help you understand what's behind the decision as cases and hospitalizations continue to surge in Georgia. Our Brittany Klein-Peter takes a closer look. Today, the Department of Public Health and the governor's office stood firmly by their decision to allow schools to relax certain COVID-19 protocols. A spokesperson with Governor Kemp's office said the priority here is just keeping schools open, and they felt comfortable making the changes because Omicron has a different makeup than other variants, stressing they believe the new stance will allow schools to stop the spread. On Thursday, Cobb County, the second largest school district in the state, announced it would stop contact tracing. A district official pointing out in the past, contact tracing has taken so long, many times students weren't notified until after their quarantine period had lapsed. And the other changes in policy help to ensure in-person learning, but the changes have many parents on edge. Now, without the contact tracing, a kid could come to school, a teacher could come to school and be positive, and me as the parent, we don't find out until our kid is sick. At least one local doctor says the state and school leaders are ignoring the science. It leads me to believe that it must be due to political and to economic pressures, which are very real, which are very real, especially the economics. However, however, the decision is not to send sick people out to continue to infect more people. Dr. Frida Fisher says she believes contact tracing is one of the most effective strategies to stopping the spread of COVID-19. The beauty of contact tracing is that it, it enables people to know whether or not they are at risk even before they have symptoms because the science behind COVID-19 infectiousness is that many people are highly infectious two days before they ever 
have symptoms. Other districts have moved in the opposite direction as they prepare for in-person schooling next week. Atlanta Public Schools is ramping up its existing protocols and extending testing options for students and staff. Forsyth County also sticking with current contact tracing and quarantine guidelines, saying they won't be relaxing measures until the spike in cases normalize. The state's revised guidance also allows asymptomatic teachers and staff to work in person after exposure as long as they wear a mask for 10 days and districts no longer have to trace and inform parents of every exposure. You can stay up to date on the back to school changes in your district. Just head over to 11alive.com education. It was one of the top searches stories on 11alive.com. When will my Walmart reopen? And the good answer, the good news is Right about now, the Walmart locations in Duluth and Noonan reopened just a few minutes ago at 6 o'clock this morning after being closed for two days. The closures allowed the building to be sanitized and restocked. A developer